Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You just hit newsletters. You're going to see Mastering Probability on the right-hand side, the top. You just hit subscribe. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is the savings of $199 or 22%. And you can get it for one year for $11.95, which is the savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with 30 day money back guarantee. So come on over to TFNN, hit that newsletter button, hit Mastering Probability, check it out, whether it's a month, six months, a year. The bottom line, you, at the end of a month, you like it, you're going to be charged. You'll be charged away. But if, you, if something doesn't work for you, guess what? No questions asked, you get your money back. So you get a month, six months, a year. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, I tell you, I do like the three-day weekends. Maybe we maybe we can get a few more of them. We it's gotta, so we got, true. It's uh, unbelievable, we, isn't it? Yeah, we gotta we gotta uh, uh, you know get get in touch with the guys at the NYSE. You know, we, you know a few more Friday holidays. Out Seriously, there. man. I mean, it, it, there's no doubt. What, it's, yeah. what, what do we have? Like five days off a year, something like that. Five, and, six. Days we don't maybe? have a lot, and I think let's see. It's well, we get July fourth next. We just, yeah. the, unfortunately, folks, it's the beginning of the year. We just blew through most of them. That's what ends we, up exactly. happening. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Hey, hey, nice call. Nice call. And on, on talking about the markets getting back to flat or or negative out there. So so kudos to you on on uh, that one. And uh, uh, you know, I normally I put together a full presentation. Uh, today, I'm just going to talk about some some of the observations that I uh, saw take place as we were coming to the close on on Thursday. But first, what I thought I would do. Is is, this is one of my favorite gold charts. I've got many favorite gold charts, but this is one of my favorite gold charts to help me understand what gold is doing and the reasons why. And the first thing that I want to point out here is that the purple horizontal lines, each of those match prior highs all on the same day. And that's really important when we take a look at gold priced in major currencies. And folks, that's what we're doing. The very left-hand panel is gold in dollars, next to that gold priced in euros, then gold in yen and gold in pounds. And the reason why we want to take a look at this, or the reason that I want to take a look at this is if I'm sitting in Japan and my local currency is obviously yen, uh, even though gold is priced in dollars, I want to understand what gold is doing inside of yen. Now, the purpose of those purple lines out there, and this is a cool thing, is that my studies, when I go back and take a look at historically, when does when gold tops out, is there some kind of pattern associated with it? And one of the patterns, Tom, is it'll top out in all major currencies on basically the same day. Now, because of time zones, it could be off by a day, sure. but basically it all occurs on the same day. And we can see here on these uh, where these previous highs were established, like in, in 2078, in terms of uh, uh, gold priced in dollars here, but it's really the yen that I want to focus in on because price, in fact, pulled back uh, in, in, in all major currencies, but on the trading day of um, March the 24th, gold priced in yen took out that prior high. That was a signal for you and I that the move higher in gold is not over. Now, you had already come to that conclusion yourself, but this is a nice little confirmation here because, again, gold can't make any major tops, or it, it hasn't made major tops in the past until price tops in all major currencies. So right. here you're at all-time high in terms of yen. We've got to get to new all-time highs in dollars, euros, yen, and pounds before we can potentially get to a significant top out there. So I just thought I would throw that yes, out. Yes, hey, can I, let me ask you. So yeah. um, as I'm looking at this, keep, oh, keep those up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going um, to. Yep. Um, okay, so the second one, right? Is the second one euros? I just can't see it from here. It is, yeah. Oh. So it, it, would, it, would, it would need 1,837 I euros see. to buy okay, an ounce cool. of gold. Yep, I get it. Okay. You know, 19, 1985, you know, yep. not, not counting premiums and stuff like that. Right, no, no, um, totally. You know, okay. Yeah, and, and you, need, you need 252,000 yen to buy one ounce of, right. of gold. Right, right. You know, but, but that's their currency. That's the way that, you know, their currencies trade out here. So so longer term, I'm not talking about what gold's going to do tomorrow or the sure. next day. But, but longer term, what this chart is telling us is that the move higher in gold is not over right uh, so right. so you know so that's pretty a, cool no i like yeah. that i can see that i guess yeah that, because it's, that, it's, it's yeah in the end man holy cow man they're, they're, yeah that really 
hit at an all time, man. That's because the end's getting so weak. Interesting. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So you know, you gotta, and, and, and that's so some of this is currency related, but it's really cool, you know. So so on days where it doesn't make sense what gold is doing, I immediately come take a look at this chart. Right. And typically, what I'll find is gold's moving higher in maybe two currencies, lower in two currencies. So you have natural buyers, natural sellers, and that's why we typically will see you know a sideways ish type day out here. So longer term, this is what I see. Now, what's interesting. Tom, about the markets on Thursdays. Typically, you know, on a Thursday going into a holiday, you wouldn't expect a whole lot to take place out here. However, what did take place, if we take a look at Apple, Apple actually confirmed an A to B equals CD to the downside. It got below on Thursday, it closed below 165.50, which was the B point of an A to B equals CD to the downside. It did it with volume. It was like 75 million versus 70 million or something yeah, along those lines. I see it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, and baby. So, Here we yeah. go. Yep. Now, as you know, now it, it would make it much easier if Apple stays below 165.50, the B point. Because if it gets back above that, then we've got this complex potential A to B equals CD yeah. pattern out here. But if it stays below 165.50, folks, Apple has a confirmed A to B equals CD. That should take it down to maybe 157, 153. Those would be the A to B equals C or two A to B equals CD price targets out there. On Thursday, Apple also negated one of my bottoming signals, which was a TD9 count pattern. Now, so we've got reasons for Apple to continue to move lower. I think, I, and I've heard your show a couple of times, or segments of it, and I believe that you're thinking that the markets are going to continue to move lower. So here's some proof for you, some evidence uh, that supports uh, that thought process. And that's my thought process, too. Another potential price target for Apple would be 154.46. And that's where I have it as the breakout level began. Last Thursday, NVIDIA, Another one of the top weighted stocks, I might, might be number five or six inside the NDX 100, it negated its TD9 count bottom pattern. So that's suggesting that it wants to make a move down to the 211.22. Now, it already did that today. Uh, it did that and it, and it tested it. I, I believe it did that and it tested it on lighter volume out there. But that does not necessarily mean that we've got a bottoming because its bottoming pattern failed on Thursday. And then when I take a look at the semiconductor index, it negated its TD9 count bottom pattern on Thursday as well. So in, it, in each of these, it was just by a smidgen, but it was enough to go ahead and violate the pattern to suggest that we would have lower prices out there. So now there's several TD9 count bottoming signals that are under attack or have been under attack today. So the levels that I want folks to pay attention to in the S&P cash, if there's a close below 48.31.24, that says lower price. In the NDX 100, a close below 13.884.82, we're headed lower. The New York Stock Exchange, 16.419.08, and the NASDAQ Composite, the number is 13.317.74. Now, folks, I'm not saying it has to do that today. But if we do get closes below those levels, that then is going to indicate to us that we had lower out there. So those are the small little nuances, Tom, that I've seen out here. Um, you in know, fact, the, the, go ahead. And you know what's so cool about that, folks, okay, is that – if you follow Steve, right, these TD9 counts are pretty consistent, right? They are. They and are. Absolutely. So when you have under attack, like he's talking about right here, it's pretty cool, man. I mean, and listen, you know, we all know we don't have a crystal ball. Right. But you bring the probabilities up, okay? And folks, right. it's real easy to get his newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN, hit newsletters on the right hand side. You're going to see Mastering Probability. Check it out. He has these numbers in his newsletter every day, folks. So, what Absolutely. Steve just talked about, they're right in front of you. You have a great one, a safe one, Steve. We look forward Thanks, to the show Tom. tomorrow. Okay, Thanks, man. Tom. Take care. Have a great one. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.